Hello, my name is Alex Harris, and our team was responsible for the development of the System for Anonymous Feedback, or put more simply, SAFE. SAFE is a secure feedback platform designed to empower students so that they may be able to provide honest feedback, shedding light on areas where improvement is needed, or suggestions to enhance the support mechanisms that are offered to them. SAFE asserts a user-centric approach by relieving students from the obligation to log in or create an account thereby assuring the utmost protection of their privacy such that no identifying information is stored. As for our target audience, first and foremost, it's for students. The system was built and designed focusing on students' needs to provide anonymous feedback. Our second priority for our target audience would be future teams so that they are able to easily develop, maintain, and improve the system if a future capstone team were to pick up the project. Following them would be peers and colleagues at Portland State University, and then after that would be anyone else who may interact with the computer science department at Portland State University. This is not a likely use case, but it's still a possibility. Some of the key features that we'd like to point out isn't just explicit to the target audience. We are the first team to develop this from the ground up, and so there are a lot of key features that actually benefit both developers and users. Firstly, maintenance. We have a Python script to support quick and easy deployment, and it also supports any changes that are made to be deployed with incredible ease. Uh, reliability. PM2 uh, manages our REST API on the back end and ensures that there's 100% uptime. Our REST API supports high levels of feedback being sent. And then a usability. This is where it targets the students who are submitting anonymous feedback. The front end is very lightweight. It requires no logging in. None of the user's information is tracked. And it gives the user instant information on if their message was delivered successfully or if there was an issue, meaning that the REST API has an issue with its setup or that PM2 has an issue with its configuration and needs to be restarted by the owner or the developers of the system. Next, we're going to demonstrate some interesting features for this project. First on the list is our setup script that has been written in Python and exists within the repository. What this allows is for developers or owners to deploy the website with ease. And there are two options. There is npm run debug deploy. This npm script allows us to execute a variety of possibilities that may exist. And so we see the message here, debug mode detected. Script will continue in three seconds. But real quick, Python 3 and Python and all of this mess up here, what this is doing is saying, give this a shot. And if this fails, clear the screen with one of these two options and then try this option. Purpose of this is that on Unix-like systems, we have to use Python 3 because that is the variable that exists on the path. Whereas Windows-like systems, so Windows, uh, Python is the variable that exists on the path and that's what must be used. So this is what this looks like. The debug option does a verbose print of everything, but let's demonstrate the other available NPM script that's uh, able to be ran. So we're gonna say NPM run PSU deploy. And what this does is checks to make sure that we are on a PSU machine and executes the script, does not do any verbose printing and your options are available to you. One will execute if the safe config file is detected no matter what. If you need to edit, it, edit the config file, option two does that for you. Three through five, execute with option one. You can also execute option three through five using option six. And then seven will run the fourth option and deploy if the safe virtual machine is the host. Next, I will demonstrate some features from the actual front end on the website. Here we are on the actual safe website that is available to students. And I'm gonna do a demo message here. So let's insert some special characters. And what's going to happen is that with the exception of the dash and the slash here, all of these characters will be sanitized, of course, aside from the actual subject. Now let's enter a simple message. And I will preface that I have turned off our REST API to demonstrate that the error message should appear if there is an issue with the REST API. And indeed it did. Now, when the user clicks off, they can save any of the information that they've entered into a separate text application and come back and submit later if they wish. Now let's go turn on the REST API. So I'm gonna type PM2 list, process manager two is what we're using here. And we can see that it's stopped. So I'm gonna type PM2 start, and then I'm gonna type in the ID of zero and turn it back on. Let's head back to the front end and click submit once more. We can see that the front end is communicating with the back end seamlessly. I didn't even have to refresh the page. So once this happens, the REST API takes a message and submits it to the database. But first, the user is going to click off. 
refresh the page, wipe their information from it. Let's go look at the database. We can see that our characters were sanitized and we did keep the subject, which is great. Then finally, what the REST API will do is send the message to the receiver using a uh, system command. And we can see that I did get an email and it has the subject that I did enter with the sanitized characters and the body of the message. Next, I'd like to talk in detail about the safe setup script that we use. Some of the finer details for the Python script, which is called safe setup.py, supports both a debug and normal running option. Debug may be used for hosts who are not on an explicit list of PSU systems or to see more verbose output. So this can be ran both on the PSU system or on a personal machine. That explicit list of available systems on the PSU side are Rita, Babbage, Ada, and Quizzer, and the safe virtual machine. The host name is detected with a regex and the script alerts the users otherwise, if not in debug mode. Another thing to mention once again is that it is ran using NPM to support a number of possible command line executions because of the system type. It also has a menu to support a variety of options to configure and deploy the website. The script will always run the first option if it doesn't detect the safeconfig.json in its specified directory. And once that's finished, the rest of the menu comes available to the user. And a lot of this is accomplished by using some global variables, which are set to use the correct path for the config file, that all the correct file names are being used, and that the host name is identified. And there's also a Boolean that checks to see if that the host name is the virtual machine, which allows the script to bypass some logic checks that are just unnecessary if this is the case. Hello everyone, my name is Vincent Lang, and I will be here presenting some important feature we use in our SAFE project. The first thing I'm going to talk about is the PM2, which is the Process Manager 2. PM2 is a powerful process manager for Node.js application. We use this tool to ensure that our SAFE server is running smoothly without the need of manual intervention. There are some key features that PM2 has. PM2 will automatically restart the process if they crash or encounter any errors. And also PM2 allows seamless update and deployment without the interruption the application's availability. By using PM2, we will get benefits such as it can ensure that our servers stay up and running even in the face of error or crash. PM2 can also provide out as an intuitive command line interface for monitoring the con and controlling the process. And below is an example that using PM2 list command, it will show the ID of the server and the name that we named the server. It will also tell us how long the server have been up and running and how many times it have been restored. And also the CPU and memory that can help us monitor the process. Then I'm going to talk about the submit button from the back end. We are using a Express API that we create a endpoint core app uh, core app message. Basically, what it do is it will first get all the input from the request body and then sanitize all user input such as title and message. Then the endpoint will connect to the database and execute the Postgres query to insert the message user input into the database. And then we will send a notification email to the receiver. If the response is success, we will return out to the front end with, with a status code of 200. If, if the endpoint catch any kind of error, it will return an error status indicating a code 500 will be returned. By using all those return status code, we can have our backend server interact with our front end. We here will be our submit button for the front end part. We use a model component in the material UI. It provide a, it provides a way to create models dialog pop up or models that appears on the top of the current page. And first, we will take a look at the model of success. It will thank the user for their email and let them know that the feedback had already been successfully sent to the PSU CS department. If we encounter any kind of error, it will pop out a module for failure that indicating 
an error had been happened and let the user to try to, to try to send a message again. All these models are based a core based on the server return status go. Then the most important thing we want to point out is that we there will be no user specific identification information capture. As you can see, the only thing we capture in the sent message is just the title receiver uh, or the message body, even with the um, the time of when this message is sent. It so that we can ensure that no capturing of user specific identifier such as email address or their unique ID. Hello, my name is Dylan Conklin and I'm part of the SAFE team. I'm going to be discussing the about page and the legal statement, as well as some additional features that did make it into the final product, but are ready to go. The about page states the purpose of collecting feedback, such as provide honest feedback and suggestions to enhance support. It also includes information about how SAFE keeps feedback information secure, like relieving students from the obligation of logging in and not storing any identifiable information. The legal statement at the bottom of the page informs students of sites to report legal matters such as Title IX violations, sexual misconduct, and child abuse. It also provides a direct link to Women's Resource Center for additional resources. Now we will move on to some additional features. First up is the Center UI. The sender UI is a pop-up model to ask users if they want to reply, display the code, or send the code through email. First, you need to fill out the form and then click the green submit bot button at the bottom of the page. You will then receive a pop-out box that asks if you want to receive a reply with your feedback from the department. To do that, you have to click the green yes text at the bottom of the box. The next pop-up box displays your code and ask if you would like to receive your code by email. You may enter your email address if you wish to receive it in an email. Once you submit your email, then you will have to click the green submit button at the bottom of the box. It will then refresh the page and send you back to, to the safe home page. Next up is the reply checker. To start the reply checker, click the green check reply text at the top of the page. Next up is the check reply button. It is used to check your sent messages and check for responses from the department. To access this, click the check reply text at the top of the page. You will then see a pop-out box that asks for the code that was provided to you when you submitted your feedback. You will then input your code into the box and then press the green submit button at the bottom of the box. You will then see another pop-up box that shows the message that you sent to the department, as well as any, rep any replies that you may have received. You can then close the box. Next up is the code generator. The generated co code is a way for us to keep our users anonymous as well as keep their information secure. By using uppercase and lowercase letters, as well as the digits zero through nine, we are able to generate 5.2 over 5.2 septuagintillion combinations, or 5.2 to the power of 10 to the 114th power. Let's look at how the code combination generator works using the code combination Viking01. First, the code generator gives you a random code. In this case, we're going to use Viking01. It then queries the database to make sure that the code is available. We do this by taking the code that was generated and making the last character a wildcard to ensure that we receive a maximum of 62 values from the database. The database will then return a list of taken codes, such as Viking 0A, Viking 0B, and Viking 0C. It will then return those values to the code generator to then check if any codes are available. If the code is available, then the code generator will return the code that was randomly generated at the beginning. If not, it will move on to the next value, the next value being Viking 1, 1. It will then query the database and again receive taken codes back from the database and select a code that is not taken. If all the codes are again taken, it will then move on to the next code in the sequence, Viking 2.1. It will repeat the process until a valid code is found. The last feature we implemented is sentiment analysis. This is done by word tokenization and ana analyzing each word for positive or negative connotations. There are two scores that are given to each 
analysis. There's a regular score, which adds the scores of all the words together. And then there's a, a comparative score, which is the score divided by the word count. So for example, with the sentence, I love cats, but I am allergic to them. Many of these words do not have positive or negative connotations. So many of them evaluate to zero and are then ignored. The two words that have scores are love and allergic, with love having a score of three and allergic having a score of negative two. So the regular score would be one. And the comparative score would be 0 0.11 repeating or one over nine. That is because there is nine words in the sentence, its score is one. Any positive number means that it is a positive review and any negative number means it is a negative review. Zero is neutral. We use the comparative score because it gives a, a positive or negative number in proportion to the length of the sentence. Longer sentence may have a very high or very low score, depending on what the review says, whereas a short review will have a much lower number. Using the comparative score evens out these scores so that we can tell how strongly each review is. Hi, my name is Jafar Rogers. I'll be covering the next two slides. We have implemented a prototype receiver dashboard with basic functionality. The, this is the basic page that will appear when you go to for the receiver dashboard. It is currently not connected to the back end, so messages in the, da in, in the database will not appear. However, it is set up to receive them but we are not able to fully implement it. There are multiple buttons with, with, with functionality that's not fully implemented as because it needs the it needs to be connected to the back end before functionality can be fully implemented. Some of the features of note that few the future team needs to finish implementing is in the top right hand corner, the human logo logout functionality. And on the on the left-hand side, there are the green smiley face icons. This is the prototype for the sentiment analysis. Currently, it's just set to a smiley face, but there are also multiple different other options available to use if they want. Features we to be added if we had more time, we would like to in integrate the front end and back end of the receiver dashboard, as mentioned before. Single sign-on for receiver dashboard login. So sign on system and a capture system on the sender page to assist in spam prevention on the sender page. Hey, I'm Jeff McHale. So we've previously discussed what SAFE is, but now we're gonna take a look at how we actually built the system. I'll be discussing an overview of our architecture. So the system diagram here details the functionality of SAFE at a high level. Beginning with a sender accessing the web page, a form module requires a subject and message to be filled in prior to submitting the feedback. On submission, a post request is made by our REST API. If the message fails, an error pop-out modal will meet the user indicating the failure. The state of all current input will be maintained if this occurs. However, with a successful request, the message is saved to the database and the user is met with a pop-out modal indicating their feedback has been submitted successfully. The page will be refreshed in this instance, making it easy to submit additional responses if needed. The tracked form fields will then be emailed to the intended receiver. Currently, this is solely to Mark Jones. For our front-end architecture, we've chosen a tech stack consisting of React, Material UI, CSS, and TypeScript. Using React's event system, our client-side logic can efficiently update user input and manage the application state in a controlled manner. The user interface utilized a modular design for the various components it required. This will hopefully aid future safe developers in maintaining and adjusting the system as needed. The backend architecture is managed by Node, NPM, Express, and Python. We selected Postgres as our database due to PSU's existing infrastructure, but also for its ability to quickly store and retrieve information. Regarding data management, various tools and techniques are used to ensure proper handling, processing, and security of the data. Express middleware has been utilized for body parsing and routing, promoting seamless data extraction and handling of incoming requests. 
Data sanitation practices have also been prioritized to mitigate potential vulnerabilities. By employing these data management methods, we enhance the overall reliability, stability, and security of our architecture. Hi, my name is Lo Shi Chen, and I'm the team lead of the development team. And I'll walk you through our agile development process. So first, initial planning. We form our team and establish weekly meeting to discuss project details and progress. During the planning pro process, by working with our sponsor, Mark, we define the project vision, goals, and requirements. We then analyze and design the project architecture, working down the work into manageable tasks, each representing a valuable functionality for end users. And during the implementation process, our team focus on implementing these tasks. Our developer wrote high quality code, conduct task cases to meet the project requirement. At the end of implementation process, we conduct a quick review as a group and demonstrate the complete work to our sponsor, Mark, and then gathering feedback and align with project goals. We continue the iterative process, planning the next spring based on feedback. This allow us constantly improve our project. And then throughout the effective collaboration, regular meetings and constant feedback loops, our team successfully follow the agile development process. Hi everyone, so my name is uh, Duc Minh Ma. Uh, I will go, in, go over the responsibility and contributor, uh, contribution. So when it came to dividing the workload, we adopted a thoughtful approach that prioritized both the individual interest and overall project success. So instead of uh, assigning tasks, we allow our team members to self-select a uh, feature based on their personal interest and expertise. Uh, this approach gives each person opportunity to contribute their best to the area they were most uh, passionate about. So in the front end team, we have Jeff, uh, Jafar, Ming, and Ricardo are re responsible for creating a visually appealing and user-friendly interface. And in the back end development, we have Finston, Dylan, Alex, and Leshi in handling complex algorithm and managing data. And in addition, Alex took charge of the development environment configuration and shell scripts, ensuring a smooth and efficient workflow for the entire team. The attention to detail and technical proficiency were crucial in building a strong and reliable system. And finally, I would like to acknowledge the awesome team member who went the, the extra mile to make this project a huge success. So one of the person who really stood out is Jeff. He led the group in charge of the user interface and his passion and hard work was truly really inspiring. And he set a high bar for the whole team. Additionally, I also want to give a big shout out to Alex who made incredible contribution in both the front and back end area. Alex showed an impressive level of dedication and precision, paying close attention to every little detail of the projects. And their extensive involvement and commitment really increased the overall quality of our work. Hello, my name is Ricardo Sanchez, and I was one of the people working on the front end of this project. And I'll be talking about unexpected events and lessons learned. Uh, and let this be a uh, look kind of behind the scenes of the things that we dealt with throughout this project. But for unexpected events, uh, one of the first things was the project repository being deleted on accident. Uh, another one was uh, the website can't directly communicate with the app. Uh, some personal system configurations may not allow connections to the virtual machine or website once it's deployed. Server running on localhost won't be able to work cross machine. Student Linux machines don't have SSL certificate, so we were only able to use HTTP during the development process. And some of the lessons learned throughout this project would be, we didn't need classes as much as we thought we would. Testing the database was more difficult than we expected and required a dummy test table to check against. Some things truly needed human verification and automated testing can only do so much. Schedule management, specifically setting different due dates for various assignments can improve efficiency. And to plan the system architecture before implementing the system and identify system components that need to communicate with each other to minimize issues during development. Hi, um, it's Leslie Chen once again. And next, I will talk about the feedback from sponsor, Mark Johns. 
And here are the feedback that he gave our development team and the SAFE project. Together, you have provide a system for collecting anonymous feedback from students that it's already useful, but that also provides a good foundation, including code and helpful documentation for future development and refinement, perhaps in a follow-on capstone project. And the system has a clean and simple design. We are assuring users that their message will truly be anonymous. This is important because it reduces the barriers and hesitation that some students might otherwise experience when they have useful feedback to provide to the department. Finally, this is our last slide. First, we want to thank you uh, for your time to take um, taking your time to go over our final presentation about Safe Project. And here are some spe special thanks. Um, First, it's the, our sponsor, Mark Jones, which is the computer science department chair. And then the capstone, uh, and the capstone team advisor, Bruce Irvin, and also the development team, um, me, myself, Le Shi Chen, and Dylan Conklin, Jeff McHale, Doug Ming Ma, Alex Harris, Vincent Leon, Jafar Rogers, Ricardo Sanchez, and finally, also um, computer action team at Portland State University. Thank you all.